Rob, it's Vince. I just wanted to let you know your system is built, calibrating, and shipping shortly. I just wanted to do this quick build overview video to give you a better feel of what was actually done to your system. Now, I'm sure you've watched some of my previous G540 videos where I covered drive allocation. I just want to reiterate some points on getting you set up in Mach 3 as quick as possible. You can see you've got your X, Y, Z, and A axis all allocated to the front of the drive. Underneath each axis, you have the step and direction signals allocated to it. So you've got step pin 2, direction pin 3 for X. Y axis, step pin 4, direction pin 5. Z axis, step pin 6, direction pin 7. And A axis, step pin 8, direction pin 9. Now, what you'll want to do, of course, is go inside of Mach 3 and allocate those step and directions for each of the axes in order to make sure that Mach 3 can communicate properly with the drive and the drive then communicate properly with the motor giving you motion. I will send a video link of setting that up. It's a very quick process. And again, you're just going to go import and pin configuration in Mach 3 and go through with it. Over here, you've got your charge pump. And again, 98% um, of my clients, including myself, leave it um, disabled. If you decide you want to enable it, keep in mind the UC100 will have to be set up inside of Mach 3 for charge pump to be enabled in order for it to be looking for the watchdog signal. And basically what it is is just a signal stating that um, the USB end is connected to your computer and then the DB25 of the UC100 is plugged into your drive. Um, once again, if you don't do that and you have that actually enabled, and you don't have the cable plugged in, you will always have a red fault light. Again, we're doing testing right now, so of course it would be off. It's not mandatory to have on. If you, once again, as an end user, want to uh, engage it, you're total, it's totally up to you. I, but like I said, it's not something we regularly do. Over here, we have our 110 volt auxiliary power input. You can use that to power uh, a vacuum, um, uh, a light, water, water pump, whatever you may need. Um, just keep in mind that with this accessory outlet, Whatever you hook up to it, you want to make sure it has its own on and off switch because once the box is hot receiving power, um, you'll need your accessories on and off switch to control the on and off, otherwise it'll always be on. Over here we have our 10 amp internal fuse protecting all electronics from any possible surges they may encounter. I'm going to pan the camera around now and show you the inside of the box, show you how the bill was completed. Okay, we've got our heat sinks right here. Again, they're all optimally mounted for uh, optimal cooling and again we want to make sure that the gecko never exceeds its normal operating temperature we've got a 60 cfm sanyo Danke cooling fan rated for 10,000 hours it's a brushless fan and it is loud i get told that all the time but it is a very small fan and it puts out the most amount of air and that's what we're looking to do 48 volt 12 and a half amp power supply she is calibrated true rms um, you can see in the camera i'm pretty sure that the enclosure actually looks to be gold anodized. It is not. It's an allodene coating, which is a conductive coating, and it's used for EMI protection. I don't charge extra for that. Now all my enclosures are now being EMI dipped. It just adds an extra level of protection once the lid is on um, to keep everything as, as shielded as much as possible from EMI. Um, again, all wires have been soldered with flux and heat shrink and tied for optimal neatness and airflow. One other point I want to make, your e-stop, I use tin braided copper to actually shield the e-stop by hand. And then over here you can see she's properly grounded and drained. I'll see if I can get in there. There you go. You can see where it's actually screwed to the base of the power supply. Over here, our e-stop, and again the e-stop is a twist release, but in this case when I go to ship her, I will leave the head of the switch off and depress it so that your, your actual switch is protected because of course with the shipping company we never want to have problems with USPS when they drop or kick our packages. On the front of the system you can see Gecko's contact information. Main USA quality validated that again, I just love that. And again, I'm going to power on now, it's going to get quite loud. Power LED. Power LED there. You can hear that fan is seriously moving some air. We've got our green go light so we know that the system is ready to send and receive signals. I'm going to engage fault. Disengage fault. Engage fault. And disengage fault.
you are now all set. One other thing I want to cover with you. Um, as far as your chassis lid, I'll show you what I did right here. We can go over for when you need to service your system. You purchased the DIY labeling kit, and what I wanted to do is give you an elaborate feature instead of giving you a template to cut out for the gecko I actually gave you if you look at the bottom diagram right there it's actually the motor wired motor wiring diagram excuse me and over here you've got the DB25 breakout you've got all your inputs and I am of course you're gonna get the uh, decals to allocate to your access for X Y Z and A so you're all set if you take the lid off you're all good and you've got it everything is right there and again, just so you know, all of my graphics, including on the power supply, just so you know, um, they are laminated with 3M8518 glossy over laminate with pro-grade vinyl. So everything you're getting here will resist virtually everything from chemicals. Um, unless you were to hit this with gasoline, you're pretty much set. They will last at least for seven or eight years indoors. So you'll be pretty much good. They'll last, I mean, indefinitely as far as not being under light. But just wanted to show you exactly what you're getting. Make sure that... Uh, you understand of, of what kind of work went into her and you're all set my friend uh, once again I do thank you for your business and your patience if you do need anything please don't be afraid to ask thank you take care